What up, everybody? It's the Sports Chasers Podcast coming to you live and direct every week. It's the podcast where we talk about sports, no hot takes, no outtakes, no fakeness. We all real when it comes to sports. Hey, currently it's 747 out here in the East. 647 out there for my mountain, excuse me, for my central people. 547 for my mountain people and 447 for my West Coast people. Oh, wait a minute. And also for my folks in Bogota, Colombia. Yo, it's 647 out there. Shout out to our guest tonight. Yo, it's the Sports Chasers Podcast, man. Tonight we're going to have a little fun. We're going to have a lot of fun, man. We're doing a standalone show. We're going to talk about the world of bodybuilding tonight. Bodybuilding it is tonight. Professional bodybuilder. We got a professional bodybuilder on tonight. Gentleman's name is Brian Hernandez. We're going to talk to him in depth about the world of bodybuilding, man. So as I say this, going from my right to left, I'm going to introduce the crew that's going to talk to Mr. Hernandez tonight. This should be really fun. Start off with Mike Mills. Mike Mills, what's up? What's up? What's up? Greetings and salutations off of vacation, and I'm back again. Let's get it. Off of vacation. How many PTO days you use, Mike? Chill out. Just one. Just one. <laughs> Going from my right to left. Excuse me, my left to right. D Dub. D Dub, what's up? What's up? What's up, fam? How you doing? You back another week or two? You know, back doing it again. Yeah, we was off for a little holiday vacation. You know oh, what I'm good. We back, we back. We'll get back to the other stuff next week. DA, what's up? Say what's up to the people, yo. Peace. What's good? You know what I'm saying? We here. Mike said, yo, that was just one occurrence, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he hit him with That's the one occurrence. That's a current. fact. We only do this show once a week. You ain't going to hit me for my days. Yeah, it's really hey, I thought that was the stupidest thing yeah. they ever came up occurrences <laughs> and stuff like that, man. To keep, and now they're giving away PTO days now. Now you can yeah, get yeah. unlimited PTO days. I said, ain't yeah. this some shit? Because they're gonna pull it out your money later. So yeah, yeah, they're gonna get you late. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Anywho's man, let me introduce our guest before we go on, man. Um, I'm really, really happy to have this 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 guy on with us tonight, man. Really good dude. Let me give him, let me give him his, um, his qualifications and his introduction. Tonight, we'll be having on my man, uh, Brian Hernandez. He's been bodybuilding for six years, on and off. He's currently, he's 32 years old. His parents is from Jer- Jersey of Hispanic culture background, um, parents from Colombia and Puerto Rico. And he has done about seven shows and traveled all over South America for sponsors, man. Sports chases the world. Y'all meet my man Brian Hernandez. Brian, what's up, brother? What's up, fam? Welcome. How y'all doing? Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Man, we're gonna have fun tonight, man. B, I, I appreciate you coming through, man. We, we've been trying to put this thing together for a minute, and I'm glad we was able to schedule this thing, man. And um, yo, man, the guys are chomping at the bit. They want to talk about this bodybuilding, but before they ask the question, let's give us a little bit overview, um, a little bit more about your your bio, man. Oh, let's see, man. I started bodybuilding in 2013. It was actually by accident. Um, as you know, Kev, I used to be in the military. So, you know, being on, on, on deployment, you get bored. All of a sudden from weighing 115, 117, I shot up to 185. And when I got back, people started saying like, yo, man, you need to compete. And I was like, nah, man, I'm not doing that shit. That's just gay. <laughs> and I said, no. The ex-wife, bro, the ex-wife was like, hey, man, you need to be a bodybuilder. This is you. This is all you. And I was like, nah, man, I'm good. I'm straight. So, you know, when we was getting married, her wedding present was that she wanted me to do a show. And I'm like, fuck you, sure? I'm like, I'll buy you diamonds. I'll buy you a car. We can get a crib. Anything you want, but I don't want to do that. But she's like, listen, you need to compete. Like, this is for you. So I said, all right, fuck it. I'll do it. So, you know, I started, I got in contact with a coach and uh, some old, old school Cuban dude. Um, he thought we were still in Cuba because that motherfucker put me on just broccoli, chicken, and water for like three mm. months straight. Wow. And, uh, 
Yeah, it, it, right off, right out the gate, I started hating the sport a lot because of who I was working with, and um, you know, I competed, I won, and then the next thing I know was one thing. It was a snowball effect after that. You know, I I liked the winning part. I didn't like the getting ready for it part. Mm. But then after that, you know, I started competing in other shows. I started winning shows. I started getting sponsors, and once I got sponsored, it was just downhill from there. I fell in love with the sport, and I've been traveling, Kev. You know, I'm always in Colombia or I'm always in Brazil, going to Mexico. You know, now I do mm. seminars. Now at this stage of the game, I'm also a coach myself. Um, so it, it's one of those things that, you know, bodybuilding came in, I guess, at the right time. So that's pretty much it, man. Got you, man. Got you, man. So we'll start off with uh, Mike Mills. Mike, you go with your question for, um, and we'll, we'll just rock it from there here for the next uh, hour or so. So you're a late in life bodybuilder, like, like Will late in life podcasters do you have <laughs> any advice for any other late in life bodybuilders um you, you know the, the the main thing is if this is a passion that you have you can definitely pursue it i i thought i started late too but because i've been training for so many years the muscle maturity was there it was just something that i just never dieted for a show but i was big you know so that's why people kept telling me yo you need to compete you need to compete and i was just like nah man i just work out for fun so uh, I do have people that have started late, like in their 33s, 35s. And it's actually the, one of the best ages that you can start at because your body's already reached muscle maturity. So it's, it's a good time to go ahead and, and start experiencing, you know, weight training. And that's where your body can actually evolve the most. Because a lot of these young dudes, they get into the gym, they don't know what they're doing. And the first thing they want to run to is the first drug they can take to make them big. You know, so unfortunately, the maturity aspect is not there yet. You know, when you deal with somebody who's 30 in their 30s, it's, it's a lot different. They're, co they're more coachable. When you talk to them, you sit down and tell them, hey, listen, these are the pros, these are the cons. What do you want to do? Gotcha. Um, let me ask you this, dude. Um, as far as the ranking and stuff like that, you know, the amateurism, how does that work? How do you get to be a professional bodybuilder? How does, how does that, what's the, all the intricacies in that? So you have to do an entry-level show. Um, and it's changed over the years. But when I was doing it, you have to do an entry level show. You have to win that show. Then you go to the next level. You clear that level. You have to win your class in that, in that show. Then you go to uh, a national qualifier show. The third show would be the national qualifier show. Once you win your class there, now you're allowed to go to a pro qualifier, which is you're allowed to get your pro card. Then you would have to win your class in, in those shows. And of course, as you keep going up in the tiers, you got everybody and their mother trying to compete, you know, to become a professional. Gotcha, gotcha. D Warren, what you had? D Dub, what you have for um, I'll guess. You on mute, D? Yeah, I got it. I got getting back to that. That's five dollars. Hey, hey, stop it, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> getting back to that, that that um the I was it the IBF? The IBFF, that's the that's the body sanctioning for to get your so it's, it's the IFBB Pro League, which is the mm -hmm. inter International Federation of Bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. um, that is one of the federations. There's many of them out there. But right now, that is the biggest one. Okay. So that, that's the one that they host the Mr. Olympia contest, which is the, the biggest right. show in the world, where that's everybody's dream is to make it on that stage. Just, just to say you got there. Got to that. OK. So like, um, what is it? What's the mindset that you have to get into as far as, you know, when you building up to the competition, when you're trying to you get into that competition stage? Well, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to that. Um, like we were briefly chatting before we started. Um, you have people that have this mindset of it's only bodybuilding. There's nothing else that exists outside the world of bodybuilding. It's just eat, sleep and train. Mm -hmm. you know? And that, it doesn't have to be that way, you know, but you do have to have some type of a mental balance knowing that you have a goal that you're going to accomplish so let's say for example uh kev can tell you we've been at work sometimes everybody's eating you know hamburgers cheeseburgers whatever and i'm there with my tilapia and my asparagus but that doesn't bother me because i know that i have a goal that i have to achieve it doesn't mean i'm not going to go eat with the boys because i'm on prep no i can still go out and do normal things He'll bring as as with, him, with us him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what do you eat man <laughs> and he's eating his broccoli and turkey so. yeah so nine times out of ten i'm just i'm just eating the same foods every single day it becomes a routine and the mindset going into one of these shows you know is that 
the competitor that does the least amount of mistakes is the one who's going to come out on top. You know, um, the day that you don't get up to do your cardio, guess what? The competitor, the, your other competitors are doing their cardio. The day right. you skip a meal, that other guy you're competing against, he didn't skip a meal. The day you said, oh, I don't feel like training today. You know, I'm tired and you just want to BS. Guess what? Your competitors, yeah. they're not doing that. So you have to have a mindset that it's kill or be killed. You know, mm. and the I say, and I know this for a fact because I've played multiple sports, bodybuilding is the toughest sport in the world. And I'll tell you why. When you play football, you play basketball, you play any team sport, right? You have halftime, right? So you have you, you work on a point system. So that means that whatever is happening, you know, your coach can come in and give you some crazy motivational speech. You come out on the second half, you win the game. Mm. Well, guess what? In bodybuilding, if you didn't do everything perfect for the last three, four or five months, there is no halftime. There is no pep talk that can make you come back out on stage and do better. Because if you messed up at some point in time during your prep, it's going to show. And the guy who did not mess up, he's going to make sure that he exposes that weakness all day, every day on stage. So that's why that sport is whatever you showed up the day of the show, that's it. Mm -hmm. There's there's nothing. There's no pill. There's no drug. There's no nothing you can do to make you look better the day of the show. Mm. That's pretty deep. Very interesting. DA, what you got for us? Wow, oh, man, listen, y'all can... Y'all can all take a drink and sit back because me and my man here, yeah, we're going to rap for at least 45 minutes. Oh, we good. <laughs> let's, let's get it. Let's guaranteed, go. Guaranteed. Because, you know, I used to live heavy um, and I played football and my story is a different story. Um, but uh, first things first, because you're younger. So I'm not really sure if you can answer this question. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is talking about the aesthetic of the look. Right. Mm -hmm. So in the late 2000s, no, no, sorry, late 90s, right? There was a guy named Lee Haney. Of course. I think he won like eight in a row, but he was, he came in like 250 pounds, mm -hmm. shredded, like bow. You know what I'm saying? Dude was, was righteous. He had, you know, not to say that anything else changed from what he was doing, right? Because from what, as a kid, Watching Pumping Nine as a kid and seeing Arnold and, and Lou and, you know, all the crazy exercises they did because they didn't have the machinery. And I'm not going to get into the, the needle pop yet because they were needle popping. But <laughs> at that point in time, no, nah, they were. Arnold will tell you what's because in yeah. this country, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. like it wasn't, he, he ain't feel a way about it because where he's from, that's what they do. It's as normal. well as in the strongman contest today, those Van Magnuson dudes, they do it because they don't get tested right. for the strongman contest. But the point I was trying to get to initially was how and why, if any of you talk to any of the OEDs, did the aesthetic change from a Lee Haney to a Ronnie Coleman? Right? I'm very glad that you asked we're that talking about 50 pounds minimum. Well, here's uh, here's here's the thing. Kai Green still doesn't win. And he looks like a superhero. But it's it's not about that. See, and 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 this is a big controversy in the fitness industry in the bodybuilding community. Uh for example, now that you mentioned Lee Haney, one of my favorite bodybuilders that I tailor after for when I compete is Lee Labrada. And he used yeah. to compete in that era. And you're talking yeah, about yeah, the golden yeah. era. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Lee Haney was one of those Mr. Olympias that he had a beautiful shape and symmetry to his body that the person that would watch the Mr. Olympia contest would say, you know what, maybe I want to look like that one day, maybe. Yeah, it still was a lot, but it wasn't too much. Now, when you look at Ronnie, you're like, yo, no, nah, never. I don't even want to look like that dude. So what's happened to the aesthetic look in the bodybuilding community, it's actually the judge's fault. And I'll tell you why. Okay, yeah. Because the judges start to reward mass, you know, so when... The sport from a certain time to now got messed up and it was just these mass monsters were winning. And that that would be messed up because you know you have the dudes like like I, I like to compete, I like to come in with a small waist, big legs, big back. You know, I like to have that X frame factor. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, if you don't have that, you're not a good bodybuilder. So to me, if you have a blocky waist, that's not bodybuilding. You know, that's 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 not it, it's not pretty, it's not aesthetic. So Unfortunately, the judges started to reward more and more of these mass monsters because when you look at the quality of Ronnie Coleman when he was winning, 
he beat Flex Wheeler, and Flex Wheeler was a salt in a cemetery. Flex Wheeler yeah. had an amazing body. Like to me, if you pick Ronnie and Flex, I'd be Flex all day long. You know, that guy had a beautiful body. Except but for the, the, the except for those uh, implants in his calves, you don't want to, you know, can't well, get. Flex. I mean, <laughs> but you got to remember these guys. <laughs> these guys back in the day, they were doing all kind of stuff. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they enhance yeah, themselves. That is not available now, actually, and that's why now you see more mistakes going on in the industry because the quality has gone down not only in the drugs because they're not a lot, a lot of these companies making drugs now are not pharmaceutical companies you got somebody you know Kev knows what this place is but you got somebody in Hialeah over here making some shit in their backyard you mm. know right, 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 you're buying right. something that's not a controlled substance that is supposed to be a controlled substance you know so right. the quality has gone down a lot yeah I because you know like I said I used to lift and you know you you went from the Lee Haney's to the Sean Rays and flexes where they were a size that was still manageable right. for a regular human being. And then when they gave it to Dorian Yates and, and um, let's get Kevin LeBron and, and Cutler and those cats, it was like, yo, dude, this cat's like 300 pounds. Like now. Yeah, but then in that era too, like in, in Arnold's era, there wasn't that much of the abuse of HGH, which is human growth yeah. hormone. There wasn't that much of abuse of the insulin you know, uh, IGF LR3, which is an insulin growth factor. So you had, a, you had a bunch of drugs that started to come out and become very popular as time went on. And these guys kept pushing the envelope because that's, again, because they're rewarding size. Like you got the dude who won last year, Big Rami. That, that dude is ginormous, man. When you, mm. you meet him in person, that dude is scary. You yeah. know, and you look at it and you, you have no desire to look like that. None let me, whatsoever. Let me ask you this, because you, you, made, you, you, made a, you, said, you said something a few seconds ago about there was a shift in how the judges judge. And we talk about this on the show all the time, how- It sound, sound like casual fans to me, but good. <laughs> how the, the, the casual fans of each sport, they wanna see something else, you know, in the purists and the, and the people that watch it every day is like, nah, it's supposed to be this way. Can you say, can you tell us why maybe the judges have gone to the mass look and, instead of the, the, the shredded look as, as Dorian was saying? You well, say, Brian, I'm gonna tell you my reason. You say yours, Brian. Well, you know, it's 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 a simple factor. Everybody's out there for money. So when you want to put people in the chairs, you want, you want, it, nobody shows up to the circus to look at the clown. They want to see the bearded lady. They want to see that freak. Okay, so what happens? <laughs> fact. Yeah, so you want to, you're paying for something that you can't see every day. So when you go to the Mr. Olympia contest, you want to see the biggest men in the world. And they started to reward that, you know, because all of a sudden, these aesthetic looks weren't, remember back in the day, it's not as it is nowadays that you have a lot of these athletes that are very commercial and they're promoting, you know, clothing lines, uh, supplement lines, uh, shoes, you know, now you have more of a streamlined look and now you have other categories that have come out and the other categories that have come out are more successful than male bodybuilders. Right. And that's why yeah, I told I was, you, Kev, I'm going to transition over to classic physique because to me, classic physique is that golden era look. And that's why I want to compete in that class. Cause I imagine me walking around at 5'4 at 220, 230. That just doesn't look right. Okay. You know, it, it looks weird. So even me, when I walk around at 200 pounds and then when I cut up to compete at 180, everybody's like, yo, how much you weigh? 230, 240? And I'm like, no, I'm 180. But dudes are thinking, I'm, and these are guys that I'm competing against. You know, now imagine the normal person that has no idea about bodybuilding and they're watching me walk around like at 3% body fat at 180 something. And they think that I'm 200, 230 something pounds. But that's also, that's like, that's what you, that look that you're looking at is something that you can achieve. You know what I'm saying? Right. When they, the normal person is saying to themselves, listen, I could achieve that. I could get to that. I, I could do that. But when yeah. you see these big hulking monsters walking around, it's like, that's not realistic. It's almost like we compare it to uh, Steph Curry. You know, Steph Curry is a little bit relatable to most people. He's about maybe six foot, six one, six two. But you know he could he's skinny he's slim and he could shoot a jump shot. Regular right. people could, you know, say, "Yo, I could do that." You know, I can't. I'm not six six, and I can't. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know. But yeah, you know, one thing about bodybuilding that's funny is that a lot of dudes that's in the gym, you're quote unquote, and they're not casual fans. Like they're fans. They're just not knowledgeable fans. Right. You got a lot of dudes that believe they can be that. Mm -hmm. That's how they sell those magazines, dog. Mm -hmm. That's how they make that money. I'll give you a, 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 a um, 
example, right? There's a dude named Lee Priest. Huh. Right? Lee Priest, chefs like this, arms like bow. So mm -hmm. you say, you get the magazine, you get the muscle mag, and you you get it. And this was, my man did this. And, and my other dude that was a bodybuilder in New York told him, because this is how far it goes back. He said, yo, I'm going to do this Lee Priest workout for yeah. chest. And my boy was like, yo, you don't have Lee Priest's body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not going to work for you. No, well, Lee Priest is a, a shorter guy with short arms. So he can throw up. 380, 400, because it's only going but so far. But so far, right. If you got long arms, you know, you six feet tall, it's not going to work for you. But if you're not knowledgeable, when you buy that muscle mag, because remember, that's how they get this paper. Mm -hmm. And he said it, Brian said it. And that's what I said, we got it. Me and him, I can come down there and me and him can talk because we both know money runs the roost. It's, it's supplements. It's the magazines, because I remember buying them. Mm -hmm. And dudes still buy them to this day. Still buy, yeah. But they're thinking that they can do this. And they're not casual fans. Like, they will know who Brian Hernandez is. Like, they're dudes that really know the, the game, but they don't know how to do it themselves. Right. Because dudes, that's what, and that's what they wanted. That's the way they want that business to be. You're never going to have the keys to the kingdom. You know, you got to pay for the keys. You know, you have to be a, a Herschel Walker type freak just to, you know, do it on your own without any help from a professional or someone that's damn near close to a pro, you know, because I worked out in gyms with them and as, as good as my body got at the point in time, I wasn't close to that shit because I wasn't willing to do the broccoli and turkey because I didn't have to. <laughs> You know, and I, I mean, I didn't have to, you know, I, I was good, you know, I'm good for Harlem, you know, I'm good for Harlem, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I got it popping for Harlem, wife beater on, bow, I'm good, you know. You local, so, you, you local, son, you good. Hey, hey, I'm good for me, you yeah, know what I'm saying, but, you know, what Brian doing is something different, you know what I'm saying, you know, and it's, it is that magazine, and where he's going I was looking at a thing on Netflix about bodybuilding and they were talking about how they have to now break open the categories, especially for women, because women have given up on that whole female bodybuilding thing for real. Like, they're like oh, right. we'll get to the woman in a second. You know, but, you know, but you know, I'm just saying as a sport in total, they've just given that up because that sports model fitness thing is in because that's who your trainer is in the gym. Yeah. And for a female, the girl that's working in your gym that's a trainer is a fitness chick. She's not a female bodybuilder. And this dude right. that's working in your gym as a trainer is a fitness dude. He's not a bodybuilder unless you're going to Golds or a place like that, you know? So bodybuilding on the whole has brought itself down to where, listen, they've come back to what I say to the mean and the bell curve. They've come back to regular people and what regular people can look like. You know, so that's why they open up these categories. Because if not, everybody be out there looking like Kai Green and still not winning. Yeah, because <laughs> he's chasing true. the rabbit. Like mm -hmm. you guys gonna have like a four hundred pound dude soon lifting. You know, <laughs> no, no, then I'm yeah. Brian will tell you like he's yeah. getting close. You yeah. got they're gonna have a four hundred pound dude with eight percent body fat. Big oh, Rami right now. Big Rami is winning. He's gonna defend his Olympia title, and he's winning right now. We saw pictures of him the other day. He's at three forty-seven. Oh, where's, where's he from? He's from Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. I think I've seen that cat too. Yeah, yeah but oh, his, yeah. he looks like a cartoon character. Like, like I've never seen, you know. And and that's when where people are like, oh, you know, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's taking this drug, he's taking that drug, and I'm like, dude. A normal human being doesn't look like that. Like if you if you were able to pull up his picture right now, you'd look at those legs. There's no other bodybuilder that has legs like that on the planet. That just doesn't look normal. I mean, nothing against him because I think he's a great bodybuilder. He's a great champion. It's just that you look at it and you just there's no desire to attain that physique. I, I can't I can't really meet a bunch of people that say I want to look like Big Ramy. Nah, that's a big dude. I just looked him up. Nah, <laughs> yeah. gracious. I mean, you know, it's it's crazy. But let me ask you this question. I'm sorry, D-Dub, and I'll, I'll get to you. Mm -hmm. um, 
Dorian was just talking about the money factor, the magazines, the supplements. Um, when uh, the championship is done, where, where's where, where's these where's these for well, you know the novice persons that's never delved into this sport or whatever? Where are most of these championships held at? What venues are they held at? What you know, you know? Can you just give us a little bit of insight on that? Well, there's there's the amateur shows and then there's the pro shows. A lot of the amateur shows happen like in high school auditoriums or auditoriums. Uh, now lately, they've been happening in nice hotels. Um, because they've noticed that it's easier for the athletes to just check into his hotel room and just go down to the ballroom and compete there. It's just, it's, it's more efficient. Um, but some of these events are happening, for example, this year you have the Mr. Olympia contest happening in, in Orlando, the convention center. Uh, last weekend was the Europa show, which was also in Orlando, the convention center. So they happen all over the U.S. and then they, ha they also happen internationally. Um, I might be flying out in two weeks, Kev, to go to Portugal because there's a show in Portugal and I have... I have two people that are going to compete in that show and they want me to be there. So, because Brian, um, you know, it, this it's, it's worldwide. What's up? That's nice. Yeah, that's right. So, I'm going to be banging out. Get, get the trail. <laughs> D Dub, you had a question for Brian. Go ahead. And oh, we'll, we'll don't talk about drugs. Yeah. Yo, you, I was just about to get into the drugs, but oh, I'll ask. Go, uh, yeah, go to the drugs. Then. I, I know I asked another question. I was just asking about your, your, your regimen as far as training and stuff. What do you do? Are you a seven day a week guy? Or, I mean, is it, you know, how intense are you doing your training? It, it depends on the phase that I'm at or like where, what I'm coming out of. So for example, mm -hmm. me that I just came off of injury, um, I feel like I've rested enough time already. Seven months without training was too much. So now I'm in that mindset of, I want to go balls to the wall. I don't want to take a day off. I'm going to run myself into the ground till the body says, hey, give me a day off. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go straight through, but normally, I would do six days training and one day off. You know, okay. very rarely do I do this. And, and I push the body as far as the body will let me go. And of course, the um, the extra supplements, the super supplements is what, we, what I call them. They do help a lot too with recovery, with endurance, with uh, the simulation of, of the nutrients, which is the most important thing with people to understand what these, these drugs are being used for. Now, these supplements, you take them like every, how long? How often is it? Is it so, so your normal supplements, your normal supplements, which is like your creatine, your um, glutamine, your amino acids, your branched chain amino acids, your essential amino acids, protein, et cetera, all that stuff, you take that on a daily basis. Now, when it comes to the super, uh, super supplements, which are the drugs, those are regulated in like, uh, for example, milligrams. So you can take, for example, of testosterone, you would take 600 milligrams a week, 400 milligrams a week, whatever the dosage is, you would divide it up pretty much either like Monday and Thursday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, depending on the frequency that you have to use that chemical at is how you would dose that. So that the body constantly keeps getting a dosage of it coming in um, in increments. You know, you don't want to take everything on one day because if you take everything on then coming into the body. Yeah, you're, you're muted. Five hours. Again, you're muted. That's Ten dollars for us. <laughs> you're, still, you're still muted, sir. That's two nickel bags. <laughs> Mike, they don't do that no more. Uh. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can't I hear you. You got I'm me. Old. I can hear I'm you old. now, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> now we'll talk after the show. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't hear ya. Oh, I, you can hear me. You yeah, can we hear can me now. Have, we yeah, can hear you now. You good? Um. Dang, I don't forgot what I was saying because y'all was clowning. I was just but, talking about the nickel bag. Oh, okay. But what was that? What was that? We was talking about the drugs. We was talking. He was talking about his regimen and how he. The regimen, but um, I was just. I was something else. I was just about to ask. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kev. Right, we'll go. We'll go to Mike. Mike, go ahead. What was your question, Mike? All right, well, let's stick to the drugs because that's the top of your hand. Now I know you said the supplements, and then you got the super supplements, which is the ones you gotta break down the dosage a certain way what what's what what substances are banned from competition like what are you not allowed to take that they're out there taking none none there's there's there, it's, it's just basically a free-for-all um and, and this is this is where the athletes get hurt because 
sometimes athletes don't have a competent coach or sometimes they don't have a coach. And then you got some dude telling him, oh, take all of this stuff. You know, I've, I've had clients that I work with that when they come to me, they show me their protocols and I'm like, you did this and like, you can still have sex. Like you still function as a normal human being. Well, you know, so I, I have my clients normally. Yeah, well, normally when my clients come to me, I have them do blood work so I can look at their blood work and I can see what their body is apt to, to take at that point in time. I ask them how long was the last time that they took a shot of something or what drugs they took because exactly what like the question you ask going back to it is the fact that there is no control on what you can and can't take. You know, and that's the messed up part because um, you have athletes that take stuff that unfortunately some athletes have died because they yeah. don't know how to administer it. That clenbuterol will kill you, man. Yeah, too much computer will kill you. Um, it is oh, I'm sorry. What is the name of that drug? Hey, don't worry about Kevin. You ain't going to need it, man. Sorry. <laughs> Just know what I it? took it. Just know I took it. And that shit had me going like a rabbit. Like, I was just, I couldn't stop for like a day. Okay. So computer is going to help you. It's, about, it's designed to help you breathe better. That was, it's, it's a great drug for when you do cardio. So it helps you burn fat. You know, that's, that's what its function is. Um, but then again, you know, clenbuterol is always used with something else. The, the problem with, with, with bodybuilding, to be honest with you, I call it chemical warfare because you're taking one thing and you're taking another thing to counter that thing. And then you're taking another thing to counter those two things to protect you from their side effects. And then you're taking another thing just to make sure that your liver or your kidneys are fine. So you're always taking something to counter something else. Damn. That's a lot. So, so people so think that the bodybuilding is just taking drugs and it's not, it's just that you also, there's scientific, you know, there's a scientific method and approach to, to doing this bodybuilding thing. It's not just, you know, going, shooting up and lifting weights or eating, whatever. It, it doesn't work that way. There's a very specific protocol on how to do these things. I so, think that, that was my question. It was, it's a very, yeah, it's a scientific, you almost got to be almost a chemist when you're doing this thing to get the uh, symmetry, your body, in, you know, a, a particular way that you want it. Um, there's right. a lot so that goes into it. Right, certain compounds will be used in different stages. So you have compounds that are gonna help you add muscle mass and add size. And then you have compounds that are gonna help you shred up and lose body fat and help you get ready for your contest. So there's mm. there's always two phases. You have the leaning out phase and the growing phase. And depending which phase you're in is the one that's gonna, it's gonna basically tell you which, which supplements or what drugs you're gonna take in that phase. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. All right, so just coming off the drugs, um, mm. Um, as we talk about the workouts themselves, okay, is there a, a a ledge that you walk off like, okay, you know, you got to show this six months, right? So, Brian, you you haven't come back from an injury, you know, this is your normal workout phase. You got to show it six months. When do you peak? How do you know you've peaked? And how does your workout change when you start to go to your cut phase? It all depends on nutrition, to be honest with you, because I, I tell people the nutrition is going to be the guiding factor on how you're going to train. Because, you know, some people just train to go train and they don't understand that the nutrition plays a big factor in how their training is going to go and how far they can go in the training. And there's different types of training. There's progressive overload. There's time under tension. You know, there's, uh, you know, drop sets, triple sets, super sets. There's a, there's a multiple ways to work out. But at, at the end of the day, now that I've, you know, I came from a powerlifting background when I was in the military. And after having some injuries, I realized that who cares if I get bench press, you know, 405. You know, right, I, right. a girl's going to see me on the street and she's never going to ask me how much I bench press. She's going to be like, that's a big motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> so True how that. much I can bench press, you True know, that. so I, I, I rather. And look the part and know that I'm still stronger than the average guy. You know, instead of picking up 405 for five reps, I got to put up 225 for 15 reps. Okay. You know? Yeah. And it's one of those things where you have to be smart because you want the longevity, um, which I think what you were trying to get at is you want your longevity through training. You want to be smart about how you train so that you're constantly, you know, causing hypertrophy every time you get into the gym so that you have good sessions. You should, if you do peak, you know, it's, it's very rare that it happens. You know, normally you have a good coach behind you and, and your mind, but you shouldn't have to peak when it comes to the aspect of training. You, know, you shouldn't have to, because when you're going through these different phases, you're changing your calorie intake, you're going into a caloric deficit. And, you know, once you go into that caloric deficit, like I said, once the phases start to, you start going through them, you start introducing different things. So as you go lower on the calories and you're tired, now you're taking other, 
supplements to help you get through the workout. Like, you know, the Fenbuterol gives you that energy to go ahead and do that cardio. Um, then you have halotestin, the guys take at the end too, which is like, you know, extra strength that you're taking into the body, which is like kind of like an instant test boost. Um, remember guys are taking other drugs, you know, Masteron, Trembolone, testosterone. They're taking a bunch of, uh, you know, of different drugs that'll help them not peak. Uh, very rarely will somebody peak during a prep because prep is the easiest point um, to, to train. Now, peaking as far as the body not changing, that can happen. And that can happen for multiple reasons. That can happen getting enough sleep. That can happen because the athlete's having personal problems at home and his, his cortisol levels are, are elevated and through the roof, you know, that stress hormone. Um, it could be the diet that's affecting the athlete or an athlete can be overtraining. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when you gotta be like, hey, Stop, stop. How much are you working out in the gym? Oh, two hours. That's too much. Bring it down to an hour. How much car are you doing? Oh, I'm doing three hours. No, let's do an hour. So you have to kind of like look at these factors that are, are there. And that's why the coach is very important. My job as a coach is to make sure that my athletes don't burn themselves out and that they're optimizing every single day and that every day that goes by that they're 1% better than the day before. And you coach bodybuilders, not just regular or regular people that just want to be in shape and both. do what they do or yeah i do both okay I yeah i do both because that's what you're, what you're talking about is called lifestyle coaching versus you know a contest prep yeah you know and i prefer lifestyle coaching because those people they're easier to work with than the athletes because sometimes with the athletes you have to you know they, sometimes athletes come with bad habits from other coaches or from their own bad habits and then now you got to change that and you have to always make sure that their psychological aspect is always on point, you know, because you're working with this personality for 12 weeks or 16 weeks, you know, shit will happen to them while they're going through the prep. And I tell guys, there's no such thing as a perfect prep, you know, and Kev can tell you there's days where I'm at work and I'm dying at work, but I got life goes on. Right. That, um, B, um, let's step into the, um, the arena of female bodybuilding. Now that you're, you know, you're a coach now and, you're doing that. Tell us how that's going and the world of female body bodybuilding. Um, it's funny because we were talking about how that female bodybuilding died. Well, it actually came back this year. Um, there's still those seldom few that like to do that sport and want to go to that extreme. And, you know, they want to be mass monsters, um, you know, power to them. I admire them. I would never touch them with a 10 foot pole, not even by accident if I was drunk. <laughs> um, but there's a new category that I'm sure if you guys Google it, you'll love it. It's called wellness. Wellness was developed in Brazil. And that's the category that now I have become a subject matter expert on because Kev, you know me, I'm always in Brazil. So, you know, for me, I saw that, I saw that category in 2014 and I told myself, yo, if I ever get divorced, I'm gonna get me a Brazilian because it was insane. When I went out there, man, those girls, what they were doing was just completely out of control. You know, unfortunately, that ca that category came to the US and the US has not known how to judge that category properly. So they've made those girls get a little bit drier and harder. So they don't look like the girls do in Brazil. You know, when you look at wellness, wellness is supposed to be a female that looks healthy. Um, she's got curves, she's got a nice, nice tight midsection. You know, she's got big glutes, big legs. And she's got a toned up her body. That's it. That's what it's supposed to be. Here, unfortunately, they're making them a little bit too dry. You know, so they're, now they look kind of like athletic, which some guys don't like that. And I think personally, for the class, they should have never messed with it and, and taken it to that extent. But females have multiple categories that they compete in. They have female bodybuilding, which is the mass monsters. They have women's physique, which is kind of big ripped girls. Then you have women's figure. Women's figure is when the woman starts to have a you know slight muscular tone they have nice rounded shoulders they have muscle you know but not to an extent where it's too big and then you have wellness which is new it just came out this year and the last category is bikini where most of those girls look like they're starving mm. <laughs> okay i tell you though that wellness you can just go on instagram pick out a name and you'll see all those chicks of wellness they're well, 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 yes. Well, so here, here check, check out this name. If you have, her name is Vivi Winkler. Yes, sir. I follow that. Yes. <laughs> check, check, check out that girl. <laughs> What's her name? Vivi Winkler. Vivi Winkler. V-I-V-I -V -I space Winkler. Winkler. You, don't, you, you don't know it, dude. I don't mean. 
disrespected people, boy. I was like, yeah, I got her. Seriously. Um, she comes right up. Yeah, of course she does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Um, yeah. Catch it, all right, all right, all right. Um, a little too strong for me, but all right. <laughs> Um, well, see, they're not supposed to look like that anymore. They're supposed to look soft, you know, but they changed them to make them look hard now. But when it first came out in Brazil, they never had abs. They were just girls with a flat stomach with a big butt and big legs. And that's what the category was supposed to be. But then, you know, the Americans got a hold of it and they just went crazy with the fucking steroids. Oh, oh white man. Like, gotcha. Sound like the, <laughs> like the guns and shit. Everything else in this country. <laughs> the white man. <laughs> But they got what's the name? This one girl, Ulysses or something. My God, yeah. She, what's the she, name, Dorian? It's, it's a Spanish name. She's from. She's it's E U L A S. Her thighs, her ass. Oh, Alyssa, you're talking about Alessandra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Wow. We learned we learned a little bit more about Dorian tonight. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. My, my wife knows to look at it. I've been married 30 years, man. This is, <laughs> this is like that we know right now. This, if, you're lucky, if you're lucky, you get to get here one day. You ain't hiding shit. You're just doing shit. So. <laughs> Poking like an OG. Hey, man, yeah, right? You know, don't hide it. You just do it. So, yeah, no, but, um, yeah, I, I um, so, um, your sport now, so you're saying you're thinking of dropping down to more of the not as big, of course, cut, still looking strong, but not trying to be a mass monster. Yeah, so uh, before I, I used to go up to like 210. Right. Um, I'm not going to do that anymore. Maybe I'll go up to like maybe 200 now and then start my cut so that I can compete around 175, 177. And that's my cutoff for my height and my weight in classic physique. And that's still big. Let me ask you a question. And now that you said that, and um, another question from watching it. Um, what do you think the the the? Because I've seen it, like the bad parts of that off season. You know, and not not for you, but just you're, you're like a thirty pound. From you know where you're going to into where where you want to compete at. But like guys, like we talked about with the mass monsters, like when it's off season, the dudes is three eighty, and yeah. having to come back down to three ten every year is that I I think is dangerous, you know. Well, absolutely, you go through that absolutely. cycle every year, um. But that's just me talking, you know. No, no, you're right. You're right. You're a hundred percent right. You're you're you, you couldn't have, have, have made a better point. Um, and me normally before, I had never done an off season before. Um, okay. You know, when I decided to do an offseason this week because they wanted me to compete in the 212. Uh, um, then they changed the weight bracket for my height that allowed me to have 10 more pounds because me competing at 165 wasn't going to happen. Well, okay. you know, would, I would have been looked way too small. So um, I said, okay, 175, I can do that. So, for example, if I get down to 175, I'll probably flirt with 190 on the offseason for me. That okay. way I don't have to cut that much you know, just cut back 15 pounds. And I could do that in a month, a month and a half. Because um, if you're ready, you don't have to get ready. You know, yeah. but what you're saying is, is absolutely true. So Lee Priest, for example, he was one of those guys that he would get huge. Like he would have a huge stomach. He would look like he was obese. And then you see this guy get ready in three months, four months for a show. And he looks like a cartoon character. And you're like, yo, how the fuck did he do that? Um, and then, of course, that's where all those factors come in that, yeah, you can use drugs, but how healthy is that for your heart? You know, in the long run, your internals are going to suffer. Indeed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, uh, you, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm cutting you uh -huh. No, no. I was going to say, because you have to look at the oxidation of fat. That's very toxic for the body. And if you're doing it, if you're accelerating that process, you're just rotting your insides, you know, out of... Out of at an accelerated rate, you know, so the, it, it has to be something that's that's progressive, you know, that's it's done, you know, systematically over over time. But when you rush that process and you're trying to come off forty pounds in three months, that's a lot, man. Gotcha. Hey, walk the guys through your last um, your last performance, your last show that you did. 
your last one that you did personally and what was the outcome? Um, that I didn't even want to do. It was more of a contract uh, uh, obligation that I had to do. And I wanted to talk about that. And I'm going to go ahead and share this experience because I'm, I'm sure the boys will like it. And Kev, you know me, I don't got no filters. And, you know, I'm not going to get in trouble for We're a family show, just so you know. Human <laughs> We're a family show. That's right, Mike. <laughs> we already towed the line with so, DA. Just a warning. <laughs> so, so the last show I did, um, I, was, I wasn't even planning on competing. Um, Kev, you you see me under the influence of this chemical. Um, I decided that the I, I talked to the sponsors and they're like, listen, you're gonna default on your contract if you don't compete. So I was basically six weeks out from a show. Um, I was like 30 pounds overweight, and I was like, damn, there's no way, no matter what I can take, that I'll be able to make this show and place in the top five. Like my contract states that I have to place at every show top five. Correct. So I I dabbled <laughs> into the world of uh, DNP. So DNP is called dinitrile. That is a chemical that's used in, you know, insecticide, you know, pesticide, Correct. dynamite. So it's, it's, it's some crazy shit. So, you know, it, it's, it's a chemical that it blocks ATP, which is the process in which the body absorbs carbohydrates. And when you consume that, your body gets very overheated. You know, so I started to consume that, that chemical because I, I've known bodybuilders in the Middle East that, that take it. You know, I spoke to some friends. Um, I've, I've been doing my homework already for a year because I was interested by by the chemical. So the last show that I did. Um, Real quick. Go ahead. Yeah. Friends don't let friends do drugs. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But that's not a drug. It's a chemical. Oh, it's friends, a chemical. It's friends. That, that was that was. Mike, don't Mike, let friends. No, say, Mike, Mikey, go ahead, man. <laughs> what? I don't have anything to say, man. Okay. Hey, Kev, I think you see he's looking at you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm looking at the officers of the law. <laughs> That's all DM, I gotta say. So DMP, you know, DMP. <laughs> I remember <laughs> the DMP. Yeah. So, hey, so, so, so we're at work one day and, you know, the commander's talking to us and I'm there sitting in roll call and it literally looks like there was a cloud over my head, just raining, just raining. Like, like it's just pouring sweat. It just, you have to see this to believe this. Um, and the commander's trying to do his thing. And then he's like, yo, are you okay? Are you going to die? Like, do you need rescue? And I'm like, no, I'm good. So he's like, hey, come see me later. So, you know, he calls me into his office. And he's like, what the fuck are you taking now? And I'm like, you know, I'm taking DMP. He's like, what the fuck is that? So I said, Google it. So when he Google it, the first thing that comes out in bold letters is may cause death. So he's like, what the fuck are you taking? And I'm like, listen, man, I got to make this contract obligation. You know, I'm not trying to default on my contract. You know, I'm getting paid. So I'm not trying to pay his money back. So he's like, yo, so he, look at this concern of his. He's like, yo, I can't believe you're doing that shit. Does it work? <laughs> Oh like, yeah, it works. Like, look, friends don't let friends take chemicals. <laughs> he said, "Kev, I can get rid of Sarge right now." <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna fuck with us in Well, he doesn't no work there anymore. He retired. Oh yeah, I know he did. He took that shit. <laughs> I'm trying to get his <laughs> retirement body right. I'm trying to trip oh, off that pension. He like, listen, I need my summer body. COVID ended. Kevin is man out here killing killing sergeants <laughs> by the roll call. He's in the DMP. He trying to get right. They in South Beach. He trying to. Oh man, that should get you wrong. You be right for a minute, then you be wrong, dead wrong. But so what's funny was that I took this chemical. I I did my prep. You know, I did everything that how it says online. I took all the other things that supposed to be taken with it, and I couldn't believe. Ten days later, I looked like I was ready to get on stage. I couldn't wow. believe it. So I was like, 30 pounds in like, two days. Because there was always rumors. Yeah, there was there was rumors that the Middle Eastern guys will always take this stuff. But again, access to it in the US was very hard. You know, mines came from Dubai. So I was like, no, man, this, this can't be. Because, you know, Kai Green ain't going to do no fucking three hours of cardio. You know, so I, I heard his coach, George Farah, in that time was very big on DNP. You know, and he's an Eastern uh. guy. So, you know, then now, now as I'm doing this, a lot of shit in my mind starts to click. And I'm like, yo, the stories are true because this, this is insane. 10 days and you drop 20 pounds. I was ready to get on stage, you know, wow. and then 
I slowly start to do my, the rest of my diet start to carb up and fill out and the body's just popping. And my friends were like, dude, what did you just do? Like, you look insane. So that show, the day of the show comes. And of, of course, when you, you go into uncharted territories, you're going to deal with, you know, side effects, problems, unforeseen problems. Um, and in my carb up, I spilled over carbs because I ate what I normally ate and I had never used DMP before. So my body started to hold water. So of course I go running back to my room. I see I'm holding water and I go into my bag and I pop out an injectable Lasix, which is a diuretic. So I, I shot up that and then I just start pissing and pissing and pissing. Long story short, the, you know, the contest comes and there was like 30 something people. And I said, oh man, I said, there's no way I'm going to make top five. I know they call my name in third and I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> then in my mind, I'm like, yo, maybe I should that shit again next year. <laughs> wow. You know what? Um, now that we're talking about what you just said, um, and I heard this, I, I don't know this because I'm not out there. Um, I, I've been out there, but I'm not out there. In California and Hollywood with the actors, I heard they do a lot of this shit because they have a movie role and they'll get it and they gotta be a skinny guy. And they'll just show, they'll take it. Sylvester Stallone? Roll. Yeah, oh shit, well he looks like yeah. he's, from, from the neck down. Well, Sylvester like Stallone actually spoke 40. about that. Yeah. Well, you know you know that he, for him to do Rocky too, he had, that's why he looked very different from Rocky one to Rocky two because they actually went to Franco Colombo, wow. the bodybuilder, told Franco, if he doesn't look a certain way, he is not gonna keep the part. So Franco, that's that's when well, that's when Sylvester Stallone started using drugs because Franco okay. Colombo, the bodybuilder, put him into that world. Franco Colombo was, you know, nice that's and he came out and he openly said it. Yeah, Franco you know, Colombo. He openly was said nice. it. And 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 you know what's funny is now that you mentioned that, I, I'll be hundred percent honest with you. Ninety percent of the women that you see in the gym that are good looking, they take more steroids than the men. Wow. Because yeah, yeah. women are so vain. Around. And, and, you know, they, they're very com the common uh, drug used is Anovar or Oxandrolone. That's the medical name for it. So it's, it's a very mild steroid that women love to use because it keeps their bodies toned, it keeps them tight, it, it helps them with their fat. So like, if you come down here to Miami and you see all these girls and they look good, 90% of them are taking that Anovar supplement. If not, they're taking HGH. Let me, let me ask you this, Brian. Um, so in, in, the governing body of bodybuilding. <clears throat> is there any mm -hmm. talk of, of regulating some of this stuff or is it still just gonna be the wild, wild west? You know, it's the thing is that it's not even talked about, you know, and, and that's one thing that does bother me. And you know me, Kev, I've always been honest up front. Like I, I tell people, you gotta be fucking stupid if you think I'm natural at five foot four weighing this much, you know, being this big. Um, but I hated that dude in the gym that you would go and you would ask him for advice and he looked like fucking Hercules. And then he tells you, Oh, because I ate all my rice and chicken, bitch, that's not rice and chicken. You know, what, what are you taking? They got you there, you know, be fucking honest, you know? And, and that's why me, I like to be honest with people, but of course I tell guys that the first, the first, the, you know, the first response is not, you know, go over the drugs. The first response is to max out and peak your body naturally before you even think about dabbling into one of those things. And to be honest with you, I tell a lot of guys that it's not worth it unless they're going to compete at the elite level. You know, I get a lot of guys that, well, I want to look good for a beach body. And I'm like, then don't do that. I'm like, there's a bunch of other ways you can get, you know, your body in shape. You don't have to take steroids for recreational use. This, it's not meant for that. Indeed. Indeed. D over there scratching records. What are you doing? Man? <laughs> I, I ain't me, man. I'm my hands are here. No, 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 no. Not, not you. I'm not on my kick <laughs> free. I'm not on my kick free right now. Yeah, but yeah, you know what's funny about what you just said that that's um that's hold on one second. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can mute him. <laughs> yeah, what the yeah. hell are you doing? Yeah, go ahead. Um, that's real crazy. Um about you know I've said, you know, when people talk about it, I said they wouldn't they wouldn't have a designation called um like clean shows if they weren't dirty shows. You know what I'm saying? Like you wouldn't have all natural. They would never, you, there'd be no need to say that. They have that. Yeah, but there would be no reason to say that if everybody was all natural. 
they say that because right. implied, wink, wink, the big dudes, it's not all the worst drugs, but they're taking something, you know, at that level. Right. And there are shows where people are supposedly not taking anything illegal. They're taking stuff because they're still taking creatine, right? So in an all-natural show, what can you take? Yeah. I've never really dabbled into an all-natural show. Uh, actually, I just picked up a client that he wants to prep all-natural, um, but he's actually going to compete in the NPC, which is the National Physique Committee. And I told him, I said, okay, I said, I respect the fact you want to compete natural. I said, but you do understand that you're going to be at a huge disadvantage because you're allows drug use. He's like, no, that's fine, coach. I want to do it. I want to challenge myself. And I said, I, said, I respect that. You know, He's 24 years old. He's got a good head on his shoulders, and he wants to do exactly what I said. He wants to take his body to the limit naturally. And then wow. down the line, say, okay, well, now I'm ready to transition over and start taking these performance enhancing drugs because he does want to be a pro bodybuilder. Okay. So we have a plan. But, you know, that. another big thing that we haven't talked about that we haven't talked about at all is genetics. You know, these guys yeah. want to do all these crazy things, but genetics is the biggest component to this. You know, I don't care how many Drake, if genetically you're not gifted, it's, it's just not going to happen. You could take all the drugs in the world that you won't be a, a successful bodybuilder. You know, those genetics have to be there. Yeah, and, and I, you always hear those dudes say that, man, you know, that's what Ronnie Coleman always said. He's like, you know, genetically, I could just lift more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, and he could, like, this dude was like an animal in the gym. Like, there were no other bodybuilders lifting like him at the time. Now, I don't know no. what they do today, um, but that hurt him, too, because dude can barely walk now, you know, like. I was yeah, just going to say that. Yeah. yeah, both hips and his back mm -hmm. are like Jack, man. And I also think some of that's from the, the drugs because I know cycling on and yeah. off hurts your bones and, you know, uh, things get brittle when you continue to do it, um, especially to get to the sizes that he was. So, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's got to be genetic stuff for sure, for sure. You know, because it's, it's, if you're long-armed, your arms are too long. You won't make it. You know, if if any if any one of your your your, your you know um, arms arms or legs are too long, it's really hard to get big. Like it's really hard to really really hard to get big. So yeah, I, you're right about that. You know, let me let me let me delve into the um to the sponsorship. B, how does the how does sponsorship work mm -hmm. in bodybuilding and Who's your who's your who was your first sponsorship, or do you still have the same person? And um, how does one go about getting one? So go ahead, man. Um, it's changed a lot over the years. Um, when I first got sponsored, I was actually getting paid just to be an athlete. You know, nowadays, um, sponsorships are completely different. Now they want you to be a fucking salesman. You know, they want you to be promoting shit all over your social media. They want you to always hashtag this, hashtag that, use my coupon code. Don't forget to go check this out. So you become a salesman, which that's not your job. You're an athlete. You're there to train and to look good. And there's a, there's a double-edged sword when it comes to sponsorships, you know, and, and Kev, you know, I told you I was going to tell you everything without mm -hmm. any, you know, any, any sugar coating. So Right. sponsors they're, they're kind of fucked up because they they want to give the athlete nothing for everything the athlete has to give hmm. so for example Sounds um true. the athlete you know he does not get ripped and shredded off the fat burner that that fucking company sells you know he's getting ripped and, and fucking shredded off winstrel anavar uh clenbuterol hgh and being in that caloric deficit taking masteron trembolone test propion he's taking all these drugs but then they want to take that athlete's picture and put it next to the fat burner and say, hey, if you take our fat burner, you're going to look like this fucking dude right here. And that, that's, that's not fair because then you come back and you ask the sponsor, hey, can I get help for my shows? Hey, can I get help to travel? Hey, can I? And they are come back to you as well. We'll give you a coupon code and you can sell and we'll give you the commission off your coupon code. Wow. You know, so here they are making money hey. off your image and they're not paying you for it. You know, some companies don't do that. You know, other companies do for your image. You know, so my first sponsor was Muscleology Sports Nutrition, um, and they're 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 awesome, man. They they were one of those companies that they respected the athlete, they understood, they knew. And when I spoke to the owner, I was straight up. I was like, "Listen, you want me to look good like this all year round? Then this costs money." 
And I said, don't give me protein. Don't give me amino acids and all that bullshit because I can buy that myself. I told him, I said, I have a career. I, I can, if that part, I could take care of that. I don't need that. I said, I don't even use that shit, to be honest with you. I said, I like to eat food, solid food. So, you know, at that point in time, it was like, well, he's like, what do you need? I said, well, listen, each show I compete in is like 400 bucks just, just to compete the entry fee. The tanning is another $200 and the flight to get there, plus the hotel, plus the food I'm going to buy while I'm there. I said, you're looking like two, three Gs. So this sponsor originally said, okay, pick three shows a year and I'll take care of three shows. So I knew in my mind that was nine Gs that I didn't have to pay for. You know, mm-hmm. so that was already a big help right there. Yeah, sure. um, and then the fact that they're paying you monthly for your image, you know, to promote them and to go to events. And you remember that I was flying, I was going to Mexico. I was, there, I was going to different places, Brazil, because my sponsors needed me there for my fans, you know, to meet people, um, to do seminars. So th- those are your responsibilities as an athlete. Is it hard to get sponsored nowadays? Yeah, it's hard to get sponsored and get a, a paid sponsorship. Everybody now is, a, is an affiliate which means they'll give you a little coupon code and they'll tell you, they'll, they'll make you promote the shit out of a supplement and they won't give you anything. You're just lucky enough to say you're with that company now. So as being a Latino bodybuilder, how many other pro Latino, because I know the Middle East is blowing up. Like they got cats from Iraq and this and that, that's big dudes and so forth and so on. Is there a strong... Latino presence, or is it becoming stronger? Now it's becoming stronger because, see, the problem with bodybuilding was that, again, it was the sponsorships. Right. So, like, for example, um, I'm sponsoring a female that's coming from Brazil. And what I'm talking about sponsoring, I'm paying for her flight. She's staying here at the house. I'm going to prep her. She doesn't have to pay for food. She doesn't have to pay for her supplementation con- uh, consumption. So she's getting, like, a full ride through my my coaching program that I do with my, my company, which is called Be Fit Extreme, I'm, I'm sponsoring her because for me, it's sad that she's one of the best athletes in the world and she will not be able to compete at the Mr. Olympia contest because of a financial problem. Wow. So I'm like, here we have an athlete that's the best in the world and you have a country that won't even help her. You know, so, so because they're, they're in a country that won't even help them, you know, this athlete doesn't have the chance to, to be able to, to show that she's the best in the world. So I said, What's why should name? she be punished by that? Her name is uh, Tati Vilan. T-A-T-Y. Um, you know, she's not sponsored. She has no type of support. And it goes back to this. We, we can't see the cream of the crop because they live where? They live in a third world country. Yeah. They do the best with what they can. And now you ask yourself, what happens if I take that athlete and I remove them from that environment and I put them here in the States? Yeah. How far can they go? You know? Right. So that's that's one of the things that is 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 bothering to me. And nobody did that with me. So I said I want to do something different this time and give back to the bodybuilding community by helping one of these athletes come out to the Mr. Olympia. Oh, that's pretty dope, man. Yeah, it is, man. I, I commend you for it. So, is the equipment that different, like from when you were in Brazil at the gym to what you might find in I don't know uh, any? Uh, well, I'll. I'll, I'll I'll say a gold gym, just to put it on an even. even um, so it, it depends. Wherever you go, it's a little bit different. Because, for example, you have places like Kuwait. Kuwait has an amazing infrastructure right. for, for training. They have better gyms than they do here in the U.S. But, again, those guys over there, that's the mecca of bodybuilding. You know, they have access, unlimited access to drugs. Over there, those dudes don't even want to look at a woman for like three months. They're over there like an encampment. They don't want to know nothing that's not bodybuilding. So those guys go to the whole other extreme that, that I mentioned that you find out as to what is it that happened to this person in his life to take him to that level. Yeah. You know, know. Um, then you have here, like me, you know, I, I always told, told the old lady, listen, I'm not going to let this take over my life. You know, I'm still going to go out and do what I got to do. Um, I'll, I'll keep myself on point to where if I want to go out and have dinner, I'll go out and have dinner. If I got to break it, have a cheat meal, I'll have a cheat meal, but I'm not going to stop living my life for this because at the end of the day, an injury is over. You lose your sponsorships. You can't compete anymore. Look at me. I tore my bicep five weeks out from competing um, last year and I lost the two sponsorships that I had. You lost all of them? I lost two sponsorships because you know, I'm, I can't produce for them when I'm hurt. You know, and that's, that's the name of the game. It's the throat. You know, it's cutthroat here, and I understand. Now that I'm back, people see me back, and they're like, yo, you know, 
be ready to come on board. You know, we, we got these plans. We want to do these videos. You want to do this and that. Give me that money, bitch. Wow. That, and to me, it's, it's that. You know, so the money that I make from coaching, I'm putting it back into an athlete that deserves it. Well, that's cool, man. That is real. That's dope. That's yeah. very wonderful. Oh, man. Um, who's your favorite um, bodybuilder? Who's your favorite? Man, that's 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 a tough question. But for me, it has to be Lila Brada. You know, he's a short dude. They called him, you know, the 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 mass with class because he wasn't too big. Um, he had a small waist, and the guy could pose his ass off. That was a beautiful poser. Gotcha. Um, what's the funny? And then my second favorite body with the new generation. Say that again. What's this? What, what was what was the this what? Name? What did you say again? I'm sorry, I lost you. Oh, so so what's well, so homeboy? One of my newer guys, he's a classic physique guy. His name is Terrence Ruffin. That brother can pose too. That guy has a beautiful aesthetic body and he's he, he's nice. You know, he's, he's he's representing that new era of bodybuilding, you know, paying respect to the old school bodybuilders. Hmm. So for, for the for the chases on here, there and D dub is having some equipment issues here. Hopefully he'll be back. Um <laughs> for what you're saying is like paying homage to the, the old school. And some of the, the Dorian yeah. and uh, Mike, we always talk about that here on the show about, you know, some of, so Mike is the youngest one on, on here, but I, I give Mike all the credit for, you know, not only knowing today's sports, you know, all the, the heroes and stuff like that, but Mike going back and looking into our, you know, when we was coming along and, and you know, paying homage and, and, and knowing who did what, and so, you know, I, I commend you for, um, you know, stepping back in and, uh, you know, realize, hey, there were some people that came before you that that paved the way for you and, and how you just, you know, show respect, pay homage to them, man. So my head off to you for that. You, we, we have to, whoever doesn't acknowledge that Arnold Schwarzenegger is the godfather of bodybuilding is crazy because you can't, you can't talk about bodybuilding without mentioning Arnold Schwarzenegger. What about Lou? You know, um, it's just Lou was the you know Lou Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, he's the Hulk. He's you know Lou, he's a Hulk, but you know Arnold was a seven-time Mr. Olympia, Lou, Lou and you know Lou. the that's that guy that he just he set the standard for bodybuilding, you know. And um, we try to you know emulate that. like me for Lila Brada. Okay, he, he set the standard. I said Arnold was the first dude that used the mental. Yeah, like he would he would mess with dudes. He would go to your gym where you at and tell yeah. you how you look. Oh man, you're the biggest guy in the world. Da, 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 da. Get you off your spot. He gets you up your square in a minute. That's why that's why he did the um loop. If you look yeah. at the first um on pumping iron, they showed him he fuck with Lou all the time, man. Literally fuck with him because Lou was bigger than him, like four inches mm -hmm. taller. Why the way yeah. more? But he was fuck with him, man. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now, there was some dudes that that had Arnold's number, but Arnold was a better poser. Like there was Sergio Oliva, and there was some dudes that like on stage literally bust Arnold's ass. But you know, Arnold was um a showman, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. figured that out before a lot of dudes, and that's why. You know, Brian says he's the father because he showed dudes that pose and then the way you pose. And Arnold was the first dude to go stand in front of another dude. You know, and, and wow. it's funny that you say that. I know that. Wow. Remember, remember how we talked about that the judges kind of let it go in picking picking the mass monsters. Arnold is, is the one that came out and said, "You guys need to change how you guys are judging these shows because how are you going to reward a guy that can't hold his stomach tight?" How are you going to reward a guy that can't pose the posing route? So Arnold came out in the Arnold Classic Brazil, and he was very upset. And he he made it a point to say it in his conference that the judges needed to get on point and start picking quality, you know, over size because the sport was being, you know, messed up. And they were, they were basically disrespecting what he did, what Lee Haney did with all these, you know, old school bodybuilders came up growing up. And even the biggest guy, which was Dorian Yates, he still looked good as big as he was. But after Dorian, the monster that came after that, you know, they, uh, it was too big. It was too big, you know? And like I said, other drugs started to be used and abused, you know? When you see these, these, 
well, they, they call them the growth guts because these guys take so much drugs, you know, and the HGH and the insulin and they're cramming all this food in that they have distended stomachs and they look like pregnant women on stage. That's not attractive. <laughs> and also now, if you look at the bodybuilders nowadays, the vacuum came back. That was old school. Now yeah. you got dudes doing the vacuum again. It, it came back. You know, this whole time I've been in the office and I've been practicing how to do vacuums because the next time, you know, I compete, I'm going to make sure my organs aren't up there with me. Yeah. So, Ron, who's going to regulate this thing? Um, well, now, now the judges are picking, you know, more streamlined bodybuilders. Because, like I said, because Arnold came out and spoke about it, they've, they've made it a point that everybody knows that if they don't have a tight midsection and they can't control themselves, they're going to lose points. That's why Phil Heath finally lost. He lost to Sean Roden. You know, Sean Roden came out with a really small waist, and the guy looked very, very symmetrical. And even Big Rami last year, Big Rami came out and he, he looked tight, man. I, I saw this dude posing in the gym like live. And I came out of the gym like, like, yo, I couldn't believe it. I just saw this like in person. Like he was in the locker room posing with his coach. And I couldn't believe this, this animal was standing there when I saw him. And when I, when I came outside and I told the, the old lady, I was like, yo, Big Rami won this year. She's like, how do you know? I'm like, he won, trust me. I told he, I said, we haven't even seen the show. I just know this motherfucker won. That's it. Damn. He's that, he's that put together. He was that lean because he's we had never seen that kind of big Grammy. Big Grammy always had the stomach a little bit and he was holding water. But this guy, you could probably put quarters in every insertion of his body and the quarter would stay stuck there. Mm. Wow. That's, that's that's how lean he was. Wow. Brian, where, where would you let in the next 10 years, 10, 15, 20 years, where would you like to see bodybuilding at? Um, I would like to see it go back to what it was, you know, to, to the, the golden era, because, you know, at the end of the day, and I think it's going to go there because of the fact of how marketable that look is, you know, the, the new generation, a lot of these cats now, they're able to have the tiny waist, the big legs and the big, the big back, because that is coming back and it's coming back really fast. It is a very marketable look nobody wants to be a mass monster anymore. That's just not attractive, hmm. you know? And for the sport, I, I would love to see the sport go back on ESPN because bodybuilding back in the day used to be on ESPN. The Nationals, yep. which were the amateur bodybuilding, used to be on ESPN back then. Oh, no, you're not going to take me there, Brian. You're not going to take me there. But go ahead, I'm going to let you talk. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. Before, before our sport was, you know, was actually streamed somewhere, now it's, you can't see it nowhere. Unless you go to the event itself, you can't see it. So I just want bodybuilding to get some exposure again. You know, you, you, I don't care if it's, you know, ESPN or, or whatever. I'd rather uh, you on CBS. What, whatever picks us up, you know, but the problem is that we went from being on some type of televised news network and we got off of it. That is and correct. And of course, why did we get off of it? Because we knew that for these mass monsters to get that big, there was drug abuse. So right. it doesn't even look healthy right. to be that big. Now, when you have dudes looking like Lila Brada or um, Frank Zane, he was a Mr. Olympia and he was a very small guy, but he had a beautiful body and pose excellent. When you look at dudes like that, that's an attainable look that you would aspire to say, man, you know what? Maybe if I got in the gym, I could look like that dude. But when you see Ronnie Coleman and you look at Big Remy, that's that's unattainable. You know, and in this sport, we haven't even talked about how expensive this sport is. You know, this a prep costs five grand. Wow. That's not even including, you know, that's, that's including, you're not including your travel and you're not including, um, the, the hotel stay or the entry fee. I'm just talking about five grand to prep, you know, to buy your food, to buy your drugs, to pay the coach, you know, hey, to get massages because those, those are other things too, maintenance. Right. Hey, hey, Brian, how is that, uh, how is that cash pay that cash price? What does it look like for? uh the different categories so for men's bodybuilding the mr olympia the first place winner gets four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars so and i i believe second place gets a hundred and fifty thousand dollars you know so it's 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 one of those things that um i, I believe the other women's categories they're maxed out at like 110 120 is what so they you know and is it that you need just more like uh sponsors people to get to, to make this, to grow this sport a little bit better? Um, I, 
yeah, that could be that could be one of the, the reasons. I mean, the thing is that before, back in the day, the people were, they were paying for the big boys to see the you know to see the bearded lady, like we say. Mm-hmm. But you know bearded now lady. wellness yeah. has taken over. <laughs> yeah, so wellness has taken over. So people want to go see wellness now because these girls are are they're fine. You know they're, right. they're even though they look a little muscular, they're really attractive women. You know. Um, the look is completely different. You know, it's not this shredded girl that looks like a man. No, it's, it's this girl that's in shape. She's athletic. She has a nice look to her, a nice muscle tone. Mm-hmm. And you could say, you can, in your mind, you're like, you know what? When she's not competing, that girl must be fine as fuck. Mm. You know, speaking, that's, that's of that, that speaking of that, I might have been gone because I had some uh, equipment stuff going on. But uh, this, uh, you have transgender. Is, are they going, are they regulating the sport when it comes to that? Like, uh men coming into women part you know what i'm saying is it anything going on with that because that's been a hot topic here in the last couple of weeks i have not seen that but i'll tell you this much um there was a male bodybuilder i can't remember his name now he was very popular and he won a ton of trophies and he decided to transition over and then when he transitioned over he tried to compete in the women's division and believe it or not he actually lost to a woman well, he he lost a woman so much drugs that she was almost a dude, you know. So it, that was the one time I saw a, a man, you know, do the, the whole transition and then compete in the women's division. But it's never happened again, you know. That you can't have a guy say, "Oh, I identify as a female," and then go over there. I haven't seen that lately, mm. you know. But again, I, I don't think you'll say that much in bodybuilding because of to the extent that these people take their bodies to. Right. You know, you, you gotta understand that some of these women look borderline dudes. You know what? What what are you gonna say? I don't know. Right? <laughs> you know what's funny about that? I don't. I don't even know what to say, Brian. I don't know what to say anymore. I don't know. I'm just. Hey, Brian, I'm hey, just. Hey, I don't know. You, know. you know something that's funny though? Like so, like when you work in the office with women, um, and you tell them, "Hey, listen, you know, you want to lose weight? You gotta lift some weights. You know, you want to lose fat? You know, burn gaining muscle is the easiest way. You know." burn fat and they say oh i don't want to look like one of them girls i'm like bitch listen you get into where she's at it's like you hitting the lottery it ain't gonna happen <laughs> like that's how hard it right, is to right. get through it to what they say oh i don't want to be all bulky like like you don't have a chance in hell of getting to where she's at because she does that all day like a job like you can't get in mm-hmm. you know so Go to your LA fitness and do some curls. You know, if you don't want those big super arms, go do some curls. You know, it take oh, I make my arms bigger. No, it won't. It take most of the fat off your arm. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of miseducation in your mm-hmm. field, Brian, and what you do. So how do we switch that up just to make our people, brown and black people in this country? Fuck it, we all black if we not white. But yo, um, <laughs> you know how how do we how do we put out that information so that we understand? Like yo, all those misconceptions about yo, you know, I don't want to lift no weights because I don't want to look like that. Like you're not gonna look like that. You know, I, like, I think that a, a big factor that we can use nowadays uh, the platform is social media. Social media is a very powerful platform, and I think we need more women that are your fitness models to, to talk about and come out and say, look, you know, I'm not one of these dudes or I'm not one of these chicks that almost look like a dude because she's taking every single drug on the planet to be an, an athlete. I'm just a fitness model. I want to be healthy. I want to have a good lifestyle. I want to be able to be there for my kids, for my family. And this is what I do. But the thing is that we're, the fitness industry is so messed up that everybody wants to keep a secret what they do because they want to monetize it and sell it. So on my Instagram, you know, I had another Instagram before, before the, the, the ex deleted it. I had almost like 160,000 followers. And I used to always go on there and talk about nutrition. I used to talk about training. And I used to tell, you know, talk, talk to the women about, you know, why they should be lifting weights and the benefits from it. Um, it's, it's one of those things that um, because there is such a lack of knowledge, there is a big misconception, a very big misconception, you know, and there's, there's dudes that tell me, oh, I don't want to lift weights because I, I don't want to look like one of these bodybuilders. And I'm like, bro, you're never going to look like a bodybuilder. I'm sorry. <laughs> First of all, I'm like, how many times you eat a day? They're like, oh, two, three. I'm like, okay, then forget. you're safe. That's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Never. You know, 
eating six times a day. Sometimes there's some dudes that eat eight times a day. Wow. That's, that's heavy. That's yeah. yeah. Uh, phenomenal. Yeah, it's a full-time job. You know? Bodybuilding is like, like right here. I got, I got one of my boys that live with me in the house now and he's staying here. He's getting ready to compete. And, you know, he's a big boy. He, I want to say he's like 5, 280 ish. And he's, he's an animal, you know, and, wow. and he eats every two hours. He's eating. And the amount of food that this guy eats to be that big, people have no idea. Wow. A lot of, a lot of turkey and um, broccoli. <laughs> no, that's the last thing he's eating. This motherfucker is eating fucking bucket loads. Like he's having like 300, 400 grams of rice per meal. And that's a lot. You know, I'm, imagine you're going to polio and you're getting that big serving of rice and he's having this every two hours. Oh, God. That 300 oh, grams of rice? <laughs> <laughs> what? Nah, I just I know what 300 grams is something to look like. So I can only imagine with rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I thought you said this was a family show. Yeah, right. I didn't say I didn't say a what. I could be talking about protein powder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And you go straight to powder. That's the best part. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's a family show goes to powder, protein powder, right? Yeah, personally, right. personally, I'm a gardener. <laughs> I like to plant things okay. and grow them. But for the purposes of this exercise, you're talking about protein powder. That's a lot. Of okay, rice. okay. It's a lot of rice. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of rice. Yeah, sure, yeah, is. sure a lot of rice. Rice, man. But I guess so. We're, we're gonna wrap this up here a little bit. We this has been phenomenal, man. I've, I've learned so much. What kind of, when is he competing? When is he when is his show? When is his his thing? And what are you gonna he's, I believe he's gonna compete in sometime late October, early November. Okay. Is he competing here in the States or are you taking him to Brazil or Colombia? Right. He's gonna compete here in the States. Okay. Gotcha. 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 We're gonna go another round of questions and then we're gonna wrap it up. DW, you have your last question for Brian. The last question, man. I mean, this is a full time job. So do you work? Uh, does like how does these guys do they have a, a, a being that it is expensive to do this right as you said I mean how do you maintain in between I mean you don't have to give all you know all your personal but just like a regular guy how does he maintain well unfortunately the, the reason why bodybuilding um, is an issue sometimes is because you know a lot of these dudes are personal trainers Mm -hmm. And you and I both know personal training is a luxury. It's not a necessity. Right. So when one month you may be training 20 clients, the other month you may be training 10. Um, so that, that's already problem number one. You know, so mm -hmm. some of these guys only do personal training. Some of these guys try to get sponsorships. Not everybody can have a sponsor that's going to pay them adequately. Um, some of these guys, I have a friend in Brazil. This motherfucker doesn't have a car. Okay. He says he's not going to buy a car. He says, why can, why, why can he buy a car when he can take the bus? Because he's not going to spend that money, that monthly payment that he would have to pay for a car and take away from his bodybuilding, from his mm -hmm. drugs that he's going to buy, from his food that he's going to buy. Um, you know, you don't understand that this is a very expensive sport. So a lot of these guys um, are personal trainers that work in the gym and they're exchanging favors. So they're like, hey, you know what? Um, can you buy my food for the week and I'll train you, you know, every day. Like mm -hmm. they're exchanging stuff. It's like they're wow. bartering. Yeah. Very few people are in the, in the position where I, like, I'm blessed to where I have my career and I can still do that. But even though I have my career, Kev knows that I'll, I'll work more than my 40 hours. And while I'm working other details, I'm, I'm the whole day I'm on my phone. You know, I'm texting clients back. I'm answering questions. Um, I'm, and I'm taking care of coaching. So coaching is another source of income for me, too. Gotcha. You know, then if they want me to personally train them because I'm, I'm not a trainer anymore, you got to pay me 100 bucks an hour to get me out of the house to go to the gym and train. You. So I'll train you for 100 bucks an hour. But I'm, I'm not going to train you for any less than that, you know. So I, I do have that, and then I do have my sponsorships that I do, um, that I do have now that they pay me money as well too. But it's, it's not a lot of money. It's very maybe 500, 600 bucks a month. That's it. Well, you got many streams of income, so that's always good. Yeah, that's a good thing, B. That's a good that, thing. That's me. You know, not a lot of bodybuilders do that. You know, right. um, like I said, they just focus on personal training. But the ones that want to hustle and want to make it, they have to have multiple streams of streams of income. Gotcha. You know, I have to like, for example, me because, you know, I want to have the nice big house. You know, I gotta have my Corvette. You know, I gotta have my Camaro too. So if I want to keep all those things, I gotta keep hustling. I gotta keep pushing. Right. So, gotcha. Mike, 
Your last my, question. What was your all right, my question is about recovery. How long do you normally take in between shows? Like when you work in the circuit, how long do you take in between? Very good question. So that question can actually branch off into like a ton of different answers. Um, normally an athlete, depending on how they plan their season, is going to depend on how long they're going to wait in between shows. So for example, if an athlete is going to qualify for the Mr. Olympia contest, which is the most important contest in, in, our, in our industry, um, he may have to compete three or four times. You know? But the problem with that is that the athlete may bury himself into the ground because of the body can only stay looking that way and that lean for so long, independent of how many drugs you take. The body needs to have a break. Um, so my rule of thumb is that if, if I was on contest prep for like six, seven months, I'm going to take two, three months off of everything, you know, and I'll go train and work out, but, you know, I'll eat clean and just not take any supplements or any super supplements for like three months. Gotcha. All right, since the host is in here, DA, for your final round of question, if Mr. Hernandez here. What's last last? question, who, who pays more, the Arnold or the Olympia? Oh, the Olympia. And, and now that you open that can of worms, um, the Arnold place to, to, uh, to the first place, the Arnold place, I believe, 110000 The Mr. Olympia plays 400000 But uh, somebody threw his hat into the ring now, which is The Rock, and he opened up a new show that was supposed to be featured this year, but because of COVID, they didn't do it. But it's called Athleticon. And Athleticon is supposed to be the biggest sports festival that is going to be in the United States, probably the world, where he's going to have multiple events there, not just bodybuilding. He's going to have almost everything there. And it's already rumored that the grand, that the pop prize for the top bodybuilder, male bodybuilder, is going to be a million dollars. Oh, well, he wins. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's coming back. But see, the thing is that the, the Rock is bringing something new. This is where I'm excited is because he's bringing a whole different type of recognition to the sport of bodybuilding. He's getting sponsors like, you know, Ford, Under Armour, Reebok, Nike. Like he's getting actual companies to sponsor the event to where he can give out that prize money. And at the same time, it's going to give the sport recognition that it, it hasn't had in years. Like I said, we used to be on ESPN and now- we'll A whole new set it. of eyes now you got. Yeah, with his, with his platform, with, I mean, he got yeah, a tremendous absolutely. platform. And like, so, D, and like yeah. D-Dub says, that could possibly- put them on other platforms like you said you know your wish is that you know bodybuilding get back on mainstream tv i i remember you know you guys probably i don't know if you remember i, I remember growing up it being on abc the wild world of sports bodybuilding and things of that nature uh, i think, I think cbs too at one point yeah, I'm not missing, yeah and um you know it was just really great to see man you know just different things man um DW, you finished with your line of question? I'm gonna get to DA and then we're gonna wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, I'm 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 done, man. I'm, we already I'm, went around the table. <laughs> we already, yeah, we, around already table. We, are, we already finished, Kev. But oh. uh I took your job for a few seconds. Yeah, <laughs> that you took a minute. But I'm um y'all yeah, learned a lot, man. This is a it's been a great, great, great uh show tonight as far as uh concerned about bodybuilders, you know. Hopefully, you know, it does come back around. Um, now go ahead. Um, no, I, I was just going to say, man, this has been really tremendous, man. I, I really, Brian, I really appreciate you, man, giving us your time, man, and, um, coming through and just explaining the world of bodybuilding, man. And as Mike Millie say, Hey man, we family, man. So you know how we get down at the job, man. You know, we family for real, man. So you gotta have mm -hmm. it come back again. You gotta do it again, man. And do it real soon. Hey, before we, before we, um, we head out of here, we, do a couple of things. Brian, where can you be found at? What's your Instagram? What's the whole social media thing? Give me that thing right now. Well, the main the main media platform that I use is Instagram and it's uh, the underscore official underscore baby Hulk, which was a name that was given to me by the judge. Baby Hulk. And, uh, baby Hulk. That's, that's what we call him at work. So that's, that's, the, mm -hmm. hey, yeah. that's the main way to contact me. That's You do any TikTok? Yeah, TikTok is, is on. I, you know what? Man. Everybody's been telling me to get to it, but I just haven't. That that's an, that's another part of the job in itself, the social media stuff, you know. Brother, so let me tell you, that, man, that TikTok is powerful, bro. That yeah, TikTok yeah. is powerful. Yeah. Well, you know, so that's another thing too that influences uh, sponsorships. They look at how many followers you have. Uh, definitely. That will influence. 
Yeah. And Definitely. That'll make the difference between you getting paid 500 bucks and getting paid $2,000. One or two, three posts a day, man. I'm telling you, you, you'll you see a difference. And then, you know, just people who will gravitate to you, man. So, you know, this whole, this whole uh, business, everything has changed, man. And with the advent of social media. But I, I know one thing, that TikTok is something powerful, man. And a lot of people just, you know, look, 60 seconds could give you so much. You know what I'm saying? You know, you it gives you a whole lot to give to people, man. And so it's I think, you know, you you might want to try to go that route too, use that, as well as as we trying to do that too. So you know, for sure, for sure. And I, I am gonna do it because I have been getting bugged about it. You know, I have my sponsor telling me, hey, you should open up a TikTok because Again, I talk about so much nutritional content and, and yeah. I'm one of those guys that is, I'll talk about the drugs and what they do. You know, I have no problem saying it. You know, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you, I'm not a doctor telling you to go take something or recommending you to take something, but I'll educate right. you on what it does. Um, but yeah, you're right. You know, YouTube is another platform that uh, they monetize a lot as far as the videos go. Definitely. Yeah, YouTube is, is really big. Definitely. But, you know, it's all about sharing, man. It's, like I said, man, people... You said it earlier that, you know, people don't, they, they don't share, they, they don't share it. They seem to keep everything to themselves and, you know, it's, it's okay to share, man. You know, nobody, what's for you is for you. That's how I look at it. We're all going to eat. We all, it's enough for everybody. It's enough for everybody. Believe me. So Absolutely. we're going to get Brian a, a sports chasers hat and, and t-shirt. Um, this might sound real corny, but Brian, I want you to do me a favor, like real quick. Uh, give me 30 seconds in, in Espanol to all, all our new, we got, I feel like we got new people listening now. Cause you know, you on here, yo, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Hey, you know, Hey, give us something to Espanol about the sports chases and, and, and just do your thing, man. Okay. Okay. Para toda mi gente en Latinoamérica, les quiero dar muchas gracias por estar aquí hoy participando y estar sintonizados en los Sports Chasers Podcast, porque la verdad es que ellos son un grupo nuevo aquí que se han dedicado a hablar con el público, a educar a todo el mundo, a mostrarles qué es lo que tiene el mundo de los deportes, no solamente lo que es el fisiculturismo, sino el basquetbol, fútbol, soccer, golf, todos los deportes, ellos los hablan aquí, los comentan. Si ustedes quieren hablar con, ver cómo hablan los expertos, vengan a verlos a ellos todos los jueves. Sincronizan con ellos y no se lo pierdan Sports Chasers Podcast. Hola suave. Bless. <laughs> hey, 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 and Brian, I tell you, that. yo, I'm mean with the with the um <laughs> as I'm replying to him in Spanish. Sometimes. What he said, <laughs> yo, honest. what he said, <laughs> yeah, I know what he said, but what he said, <laughs> he, he, he shouted us out on all sport play on, on the all, all the platforms. You know, he said, yo, we talk about soccer, baby. Okay, you caught the middle. All right, you caught a little bit. Okay, I give you that. <laughs> Whatever, man. Panamanian fake. No, it's, I'm, I'm act, it's, no, I'm not gonna put my business out there. Yeah, don't, 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 don't. I ain't gonna put my business out there. But I'm not Panamanian. But shout out to the Panamanians. But go ahead. Um, hey, you got some beautiful women, man. That's all I'm gonna say. No, oh, I know. I'm from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? I know. All that. <laughs> we got all that. I eat my yellow rice. Mike, before this goes south, where can we be found? <laughs> we can be found at Sports Chasers Podcast on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on SoundCloud, Sports Chasers Podcast, and anywhere podcasts can be found, we are also located there at Sports Chasers Podcast. Go. There go the logo. There go the thing. Um, Brian, we do this part here where we do the last part in shots. Guys, take a few seconds to say, hey, what's on their mind for this week and this upcoming week? We'll start with D-Dub. D-Dub, go ahead. Hey, Brian, I'm going to tell you, yo, heal up, man. Get ready for your next uh, your next uh, show. So, you know, and again, we appreciate you coming on for tonight. Uh, Kev, nothing heavy. Uh, everybody, you know, this world is crazy, man. That's all I got to say. <laughs> this world is crazy. Uh, you know, I don't know what else to say no more, but everybody just, you know, do your thing. Wash your hands and mind your business. <laughs> Wash your hands and mind your business. Yeah. Mike Mills, go ahead. Uh, thank you for coming to our show. We appreciate it. Taught me a lot about bodybuilding. You inadvertently taught me a lot about DA today. But that was cool <laughs> too. Uh, hey, shout out to the brand we all know and love Saturday. I got my duck shirt on. Let's get it. Uh, 
Last shout out, shout out the city of Savannah, Georgia. I was down there last week. It's beautiful out there. And I drink all the tequila in the city. So shout out to them. And uh Sons and Six. And that's my that's it. I'm good for the week. Thank you, Mike Millie. Uh DA. Peace. I'm tired. No. Oh, Going to bed. Yeah, yeah. I have wound down. Uh gotta get up very, very early tomorrow. Well, we get my shoulder replaced next week, Thursday. So, you know, just just relieved to get the fuck away from all this fucking pain in my shoulder uh, on a constant basis. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Just got to keep my potassium levels up and I'm all good. Okay. But hey, B, thank you, man, for coming, man. Um, It's, it's a, a pleasure to talk to someone that's actually in the game, actually doing it and, and seeing it, you know, being able to explain. Um, Cause I, you know, from the outside, I can only assume, and especially being from a different, you know, generation and looking at it, I'm, I'm glad you have that knowledge of the classics. And I guess you call that the classical time. I do too. Um, Cause I guess older dudes are going to go back to Arnold and that's going to be their time. Right. So um, I, I thank you again for coming, man. And, and I, I, I Hope to have you on again, man. Whenever you want to come by, even if it ain't a, uh, a what you call them, day. Uh, you know, we you get on here, you just gotta talk about everything else, and remind me not to curse every few minutes. All right. <laughs> I appreciate, it. I appreciate it. Thank you guys uh, so man. much for having me. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, what's your party size, brother? Go ahead. Nothing, man. Like D Dub said, man, I'm just trying to get back on stage. Want to recover. I thank God for you know another day being healthy and you know on the process to recovery and that i was blessed enough to be on this podcast with you guys yeah i appreciate everything you guys do um like i said you know to the spanish community, you guys are talking about every single sport you guys just don't cater to one you guys are subject matter experts on every single sport which i find very interesting because you know you guys don't play favorites you guys are out there trying to share you know knowledge with everybody on what it on what the world of sports is you know and, and i think that that's very respectable and, and admirable you know you guys go out there and you do your homework before you interview somebody so i can tell when somebody prep for an interview for me you know like kev you know i do these a lot so you know this was a very i enjoyed this time you know this to me wasn't it's not something this forced you know sometimes you're like damn i gotta go do this interview no this was this was very you know organic natural i loved it and Kev, you know, you and me get down all the time at work. So yeah, no this doubt. was just like another another day talking shit. <laughs> man, dude, I am so happy that you came through, man. And um, I, I love you, bro, for it, man. And, uh, and the guys, I can speak for them probably, but they probably told it yourself. We're missing Eric tonight. Um, but um, hopefully the next time Eric, Eric will be on. Um, we call him the angry one because he's always angry. But um, he couldn't be with us tonight. But um, we miss him. But yo, B, thanks again, man. You have absolutely taught us a whole lot about the, the world of bodybuilding. Some things I knew, some a lot of things I didn't know. And we're absolutely going to have you back on here and hopefully we can push it where bodybuilding gets back in the mainstream. And like I said, shout out to Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, man, for what's that platform he had again? Um, I can't think of it. Athleticon. Athleticon. So he can get you guys some light and, and let y'all guys, you know, you know, shine again, man. Because uh, I, I think all sports have its purpose and has its plan, man. And um. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you, man. I, I couldn't do it. I like to eat, man. So broccoli and chicken <laughs> would make me mad, man. I mean, even though I probably do need to do it. I mean, I got some broccoli and chicken over here right now, but I got rice in here. But, <laughs> but um, man, shout out to you, man. Um, I, I really respect you for what you do uh, as a bodybuilding. Shout out to even giving back to some of the people that you're training now, man. You know, not even wanting anything, though, just giving back and making sure that the people are done right and train right. And I commend it. I can really commend you that commend you for what you do, bro, man. So no doubt. So with all that teary near tear jerking and wham 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 stuff, uh on behalf of myself, hey, I am Kevin L. Warren, your host and moderator for Dorian DA Albritton. Um for hold on. Gotta get my little outro music for Mike Mills and for Daryl D. Dub Warren. And in his absence, my man, the angry one, James Warren. Yo, this is the Sports Chasers Podcast. Thank you, Brian Hernandez, for coming through and rocking on with us. 
Hey, man, we appreciate you. Bravo, bravo. Yo, this is the Sports Chasers Podcast, man. We'll see you next week. We'll talk about the rest of sports, man. But this week, it was all about bodybuilding, man. Y'all have a blessed one. See y'all next week. Thank you.